Carrying on with the apps theme today, and this one's going to get you going. I'm going to save the best till last, but let's start with this one. This is for turntables, and it's a nice and simple thing. This was me just twiddling it around in my hand. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to use it properly. This is how it should be used. This is useful for checking. So you find the center of gravity, you put it in the middle of the turntable, nice and evenly, and you let the turntable spin. That's meant to be 45, it's 44.9, point between 0.7 and 0.9. And then you decide you're gonna change the speed and you check the other speed. Which should come up now any second as being 33 and a bit. As you probably know, the real speed for a 33 is 33 and a third. 33.33 well so you should say 33.3 there we go 33 point I wrote that counts as 33.3 anyway it's a good way of finding out whether the turntable is right I wouldn't actually use this to set the turntable because you can't do it dynamically you're better off using a strobe which is basically just a neon lamp and the disc this is what the strobe would show you Next we have this one, it's a bit off the wall. This one is called simply BPM. BPM being beats per minute. And this is great because if you play music into it, it'll tell you how fast the music's playing. Why is that useful? It means you can test the speed or something without having to have a proper test tape or a test record or whatever. Here you can see it being used to compare two sounds. One's coming from a cassette deck and the other one's coming from a stream. Uh, the track being played is exactly the same on both and so the idea is you play one and, then, and you see what the numbers come up then you play the other one and see what the numbers come up and then you can see here the difference is only three beats in 200 and that's not an awful lot of difference now the beauty of this is because you're using a stream you know that that's absolutely accurate and then when you compare it to the cassette deck if it comes in within one or two percent you know there's nothing to worry about it's a very good way of setting up the speed without having to go to all the expense of finding proper test tapes. You just have to find a stream supplier that has got the same version as the track that you've already re you've already got. In this case, I was using a track from a Hot Chocolate album, which was fine because it was exactly the same as the version that they had on Amazon Music. So, like for like comparison, it measures the BPM and the BPM has to be the same, or it's not the same. And if it's not the same, you know there's something needs adjusting. You may say, is this as accurate as using a proper test tape and things? But no, but then it's a free app. And if you've got an Amazon Music, it's free. But if you're going to buy a test tape, you're looking at lots of money. And if you're going to buy the equipment to measure it, it's even more money. So it's, uh, it's pretty good. It gets it close enough and it costs you nothing. Just a little bit of time, a little bit of fiddle. If you want any help with any of this, you can always put something in the comments. And if you find any value, don't forget you can like and subscribe and share it on the social medias. On to the penultimate app. This one is Voice Recorder. It normally comes with an Android phone. And there's various versions of different ones around. But if you use something like this, you can get very high quality recordings from your phone. And then you can quite simply use those for different things. One of the things I found it most useful for is you can record the playback of a tone, like for instance, three kilohertz, and then you can feed it into another app, which is this one. This isn't actually for a phone, it's for a PC, but it's still an app and it's very, very good. And I'll put a link in the description for it. When you couple the digital recorder with this app, the Wild Flutter Meter, because it doesn't care whether it's exactly the right amplitude, it's only worried about the frequency stability. You don't have to worry. You can just put the recorder on your speaker, play back the tone, then you can play the tone back into the microphone of your computer, and hey presto, you've got the whale flutter readings. Nice and simple. Anyway, that covers it for now. If there's anything else you'd like to know, put it in the comments, and if I can think of anything else that's of, of off-the-wall use, then I'll probably make another one. You never know. So that's it for now. Catch you another time. Don't forget... Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. There should be a couple of videos on the screen now that you might be interested in. Click through and uh, I'll say goodbye for now.